started. Let's see. Gonna get the pep rally music going. All right, so um, for those who aren't familiar with me, my name is Sue Dunlap and I'm the Director of Culture and Employee Experience out of the Georgia offices. And I'm also your One Digital Dash Southeast Region um, Captain. So thank you guys so much for joining today's pep rally. Um, but the first order of business is that I do have a brand new um, pie in the face challenge video to share with you. So I will um, pull up that screen and, and find out which two victims we have um, doing the pie in the face challenge and who they have nominated to do this challenge um, with them. So let me stop sharing my screen and get that teed up for you in a second. Or the line. Yes. I'm calling regarding your case number 0374928. All right, here we go. Let's share my screen for this video. And let's find out who our victims for the pie in the face challenge are. Hey everybody, how are you? Hope you're having a great day. Hey, I'm John Beasy and this is And I'm Michelle Bussey. And we have been challenged by Allison and Ruthie and am accepting the One Digital Dash Pie in the Face Challenge on behalf of the Atlanta Area School of Death, Pathane Cookman University, and Children's Home Society of Florida. Mm -hmm. I nominate Nicole Eccles, Jackie Kish, and April Husted. And I say let's go to the top. So I nominate Adam Brockman. David Asbury, and since we're Florida too, let's get Amanda Kendrick in on it. <laughs> to do this with me, to bring awareness, and to donate to these organizations to help us reach our Florida Georgia team finish line. Here you go. Pie in the face. One. Oh, you have to switch because mine, I can't do yours. Okay. okay ready? One, <laughs> okay. two, three. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, awesome. Love, love, love the challenges that we're having here today. Um, so we have six new victims, um, but I have no official true, true Florida victims yet. So we still have Florida victims that we need to get. So I need someone to volunteer from Florida and tell me who is willing to do this in Florida so that we can get this started. We have two more weeks until the race. So I need someone to put in the chat from Florida that they will do this. Anyone? Takers, I need somebody to put in the chat for me in Florida to do this pie in the face challenge. Mike Perino, I know you're on this call. <laughs> no, he's not. Yes, you are. <laughs> that was you. Come on. Can you do that? Can you can you can we get your commitment? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have put anything in this chat. <laughs> you can do you can do one on Moroski, even though he's not in your region anymore. <laughs> That's right. You can nominate, you can nominate Matt. All right. Um Let's see. Do we do we get any takers? Still, no one. Okay, Mike, you're okay. you're defaulted. Okay, all right. I have to do it. That that's not a problem. I just wanted to confirm because I've been running into that with um, a few different clients in Duke Energy oh. as to who's right. doing. Let's see. All right. So let's keep moving. Hang on a second. All right. So. Um, today's agenda for the pep rally is you're going to meet some of uh, the committee members that have made the dash possible at this point in time, um, give you a little bit of insight about what the digital dash is, what options you have to help um, with our efforts. We're going to go over what our current goal is and what our status is on fundraising. And then we're also going to hear from th um, the three organizations that we're supporting. And lastly, we're going to do a round of trivia. Um, about, you know, facts about the organizations that we're supporting and whoever is the top trivia winner will get a one digital spa kit. So 
we will keep trucking here. And here are your team members from the committee. And um, let's see if I can lower this a little bit. Hang on, lower this a little bit. Uh, hopefully that helps, okay. All right, so um, again, I'm your captain. And so we've got a ton of people from Florida, I'm sorry, from Georgia that have helped us with this. We've got a diversity and inclusion committee as well as a um, culture and well-being committee. And many of these team, team members have helped with these um, efforts that we're doing. And um, with Florida, we've got Lindsay Underwood and Stacy Ramos helping um, with the Florida efforts. All right, so what is the digital dash? Um, this is something that's been going on since 2009. It was initially a local Atlanta race. And obviously with COVID, it allowed us to pivot to make it a more virtual um, option to expand our funding, fundraising efforts from an, to a national uh, presence. Um, this year, the virtual race runs October 11th through October 14th. And uh, any activity will count as miles towards the dash. So even if you don't run, I don't want you to use that as an excuse. If you walk, that will count. If you box, that will count. Anything that you do from a physical perspective will count towards miles for us to travel from Atlanta to LA. And where our goal is to be the furthest traveling um, team once the race starts that week. Uh, anyone can participate. So ideally we would love for one digital employees to participate, but you can expand this participation beyond to your friends and family. So please don't hesitate to extend the invite to them. And if you aren't already a member to participate, there is the, uh, the link to the dash, I'm sorry, to the registration page there. I'll send this out as a recap, just as a reminder, and make sure you pick the Florida Georgia finish line team. There is a $20 participation fee, but keep in mind that 100% of, of that registration fee goes to our nonprofit organizations. Um, so the three organizations that we have chosen at this point is um, the Atlanta Area School for the Deaf, uh, Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida, and Children's Home Society of Florida. And we chose these three organizations because the Digital Dash um, is raising money for organizations to support diverse, that support div diversity, equality, and inclusion. So with that, um, let's figure out what options you have to participate. So option one is that you sign up to be a, a participant to the Dash. And as again, $20, $20 registration fee, 100% of that goes to our organizations. We have established prizes for Florida and Georgia. And so as you can see on the slide, first uh, prize for Georgia is a one night stay at the Ritz Lake Oconee with a th one, at least $1,000 raised. Um, first prize for Florida will get you $500 worth of kudos points. And you do have to raise at least a minimum of $500. Second prize is $300 worth of kudos points. Again, raising a minimum of $300. And third prize is um, $100 worth of kudos points with a minimum of $100 raised. So um, I put some screenshots of all of the pie in the face challenges that we've had so far. And I will give you a little tip here. Um, the way that I used um, my pie in the face video to help raise money. And I was able to raise, I've been able to raise um, close to $800 at this point in time. And as a captain, I'm putting myself out of the, out of contention for these prizes, just so you know. But um, if, you, if you send a text or an email to your um, fellow friends and family and tell them, you know, donate um, whatever amount you can, and I'll send you the link to my YouTube video of me getting smashed in the face with pie. And a lot of a lot of people have um, donated just to get that video and be able to watch it. So if you haven't already done it that way, I would certainly recommend that you do it that way. And I'm at, like I said, I've been able to raise close to eight hundred dollars worth just doing it th that campaign campaign alone. All right. 
So the Digital Dash is the week of October 11th through the 15th. And we have incentivized different activities every day that week for you guys to do in order to earn kudos points. So we will send out more information about this the week of the Dash, but just wanted to give you a heads up that you, know, you will be able to receive kudos points for actually getting out there and moving and doing some certain activities. All right, so have you guys checked out the online auction yet? It's on our Teams channel. And um, I will send out another follow-up link for you guys to check that out if you haven't already. Um, but just as a heads up, these are just some screenshots of the items that we are putting up. And some of them aren't, aren't up yet. They will be up by the end of this week. Um, so a lot of donations from Florida and Georgia um, together have been donated. And if you have anything that you would like to donate to help raise, us, help raise money for these organizations, please contact me as soon as possible so that we can get those posted. Um, but we've got a whole variety of different things that you can bid on from, you know, um, Bruce Goen, um, the senior managing principal in, in Florida, offering up his home for um, a night with a fishing experience, um, some AirPods, some sporting events, some different themed gift baskets, uh, printers, um, artwork, so a whole bunch of different things. Please take some time to check it out. The auction will end on um, October 14th at 5 p.m. All right. And then the other option that you can do to participate is the 50-50 raffle. And our current jackpot is at $778 right now. So if you're interested, I've given you the different options for you to pay for your tickets. There's Venmo, Cash App, and Zelle as options. And um, you just put in the amount that you wanna pay for and we'll, I will send you your ticket numbers. And we're actually going to do the drawing on October 14th at 1230. So you have until noon that day to purchase your tickets. And the jackpot um, amount will always continue to be updated on the, on the team's auction page. All right, so we set a $50,000 goal and we do have two weeks to go. And as of nine, uh, as of this afternoon, let's find out where we are. <laughs> All right, we are in second place, you guys. So we've got a lot of work to do still. Again, we've got two weeks left. So let's do whatever it is we can to help raise money for these organizations. And um, the top fundraiser, um, fundraising re region will receive an additional $5,000 from corporate to support their organizations. So let's do this for, for these organizations that we're raising money for. All right, so let's take some time to get a little bit to know, get to know our, um, M, our MVPs and our MVPs are our organizations that we're supporting um, for our DASH fundraising efforts. And so I've invited um, member, a member from each organization from the Atlanta Area School for the Deaf and Children's Home Society of Florida um, <clears throat> with us today. And um, Bethune Cookman, I have a short video to show um, as well. So we are going to kick it off with um, Lisa Buckner, who's with the Atlanta Area School for the Deaf, to um, tell us a little bit about um, their organization. And, and I'll also show a video after, after her as well. Lisa? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Lisa Buckner, the Atlanta Area School for the Deaf new superintendent. To tell you a little bit about our school, we serve about 163 students from approximately 27 school districts across Georgia serving ages three to 21. We have a very positive secondary outcome rate. All of our students here are deaf and hard of hearing and all are based on their IEP referrals from their local school districts. We are seen as a resource for students who are deaf and hard of hearing for psychological and educational evaluations through our outreach program. We strive to be a bilingual 
program. We have an amazing award-winning CTA program. We are also involved in our local high sports. And we really appreciate everything you all are doing for our school and to support us. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. Um, let me show this video real quick. One second. Oh, sorry guys, I didn't realize you couldn't see my screen until now. All right, let me get this video ready for you. Okay, here we go. Let me share my screen. Hi, I'm Lisa Buckner. Superintendent at the Atlanta Area School for the Deaf. Your donation benefits the school in a variety of ways. For example, field trips, hearing aid batteries, student rewards. Thank you for your support. Awesome. Thanks again, Lisa, for being here. We appreciate it. Um, now we will move to okay. on, Stephanie um, Moser with Children's Home Society of Florida. Hey, everybody. Hey. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. And thank you for selecting us as one of the organizations you support. We're really, really grateful that you chose us and we're in great company with the Atlanta School for the Deaf and with the Foon Cookman. So I am with Children's Home Society or CHS for short. So CHS is a, a large statewide organization. We have about 1300 employees all throughout the state of Florida. And we're also very old. We were founded in 1902. So next year, we're going to be celebrating our 120th birthday. We serve more than 59,000 children and families every year. And the services that we offer are different depending on the region of the state. Some regions need different services. So we try to really tailor what we offer to the needs of the area. So while we're often best known for our work in the child welfare services, such as the foster care and adoption services, we also serve the communities through early childhood services, counseling and other mental health services, community partnership schools, mentoring, outreach, and job training programs. So one very interesting thing that I didn't know about the child welfare system before I started working here is that a full 75% of children enter the foster care system because of fixable family issues like poverty, like addiction, domestic violence. Now, some of these things you are able to help with before children need to be removed for their safety. And of course, keeping a family together is, is the best thing for all parties involved. So if a child isn't getting enough food or isn't getting medical care, we can support the family by directing them to services that can help. We can assist the parent with job training or education expenses to better themselves so that they could support the family and, and keep them together in the first place. So of course, this isn't always feasible, but many, many times it is and it works. We're able to keep families together and that's the best case scenario for everybody. So another wonderful program that I would like to call attention to is our community partnership school model. So these are schools that support the students in ways beyond just high quality academics. 
So some of these students in these often underserved areas of the state have baggage beyond their years. There's hunger and homelessness and poverty, exposure to violence, mental health struggles, inadequate health care, and more. So they can't focus on the education when you're carrying that kind of weight. So community partnership schools address all of that. And it's all in the safety of their school where they're most comfortable. In their school, they will have in-house medical care, counseling, food pantry, clothing closets, and we even have support for the parents. We'll help the parents put together a resume or secure housing, anything you can think of to help these students. Because if a student doesn't have food for breakfast or has a severe cavity, they're not going to be able to focus on their schoolwork. They're not going to be able to pay attention to their academics. We have to feed them first, or we have to get them to a dentist. And the dentist is right there in the school where they're, it's easy to get to and it's free. And then once you address those things, then they can think about their, their high quality schooling. So, so far we have 20 of these throughout the state and we're expanding every year. We would love to have 200 or 2,000 community partnership schools. It really, really works. Um, speaking of the community partnership schools, in November, we're going to be having a free event to talk more in depth about the partnership school model, and in particular, the community partnership schools in Central Florida. We have a school called ACE, which stands for the Orange County Public Schools Academic Center for Excellence, right here in Orlando in Paramore neighborhood and it's virtual. So everybody can join, everybody can learn a little bit more about this model and why we love it so much and why it's so important for the community. So that's going to be November 10th at 8 a.m. Again, it's free to attend. There will be an ask for donations to support the school at the end. So it's virtual though, so there's no pressure. We just really want folks to know about the schools and know more about the model and become ambassadors to tell their friends about it. So to give you an idea of how we could use the funds raised from that event, $10,000 is going to give an entire classroom of students access to on-site health care, counseling, food, clothing, parental assistance for more than a year. $5,000 could provide 50 counseling sessions for a parent in need. $1,000 could provide therapy to a sibling group that has experienced trauma and needs your help to find healing. Or $500 could provide basic necessities like clothing and shoes to 10 new students that come to OCPS ACE with very little of their own as so many of them do. So I'm gonna post the link to that to register and I'll post my email address as well if it's okay with Sue. And if you prefer, you can just shoot me an email and I'll add you to the guest list. It's just that simple and we'll see you that morning. So uh, in closing, I'd love for everybody to become more involved. You know, if you're in Florida, we're always looking for board members. We're always looking for committee members throughout the state. And if you're in Georgia, we'd love for you to participate in these virtual events and share our social media. And just learn about what we do, become part of the CHS family. So thanks guys so much for selecting us as one of the organizations to support. We're really honored that you wanna hear more about what we do. We'd love to share our mission. We will talk about ourselves forever if you let us and we're grateful for the opportunity. So good luck with the challenges and I'm here to support you if you need anything else, have any questions, just let me know. Awesome, thank you so much, Stephanie. I appreciate your, you being here as well. Um, and then last but not least, um, we are supporting Bethune-Cookman University, and I'm going to share a short video on that real quick. Oh, hold on, let me get the volume up, one second. This university is responsible for a success created nowhere else. This university cultivates diamonds in the rough. This university embodies 
the American spirit like no other. There's something special about this place. There's something special about her spirit. Mary McLeod was a champion. And just think about this. Here's a woman born 10 years out of slavery. Imagine a black woman, 1904. She's 29 years old. And she comes to a place she's never been before. And she has this desire to start a school. All she had was five little girls, faith in God, and a dollar and 50 cents. Who starts a school with a dollar and 50 cents? When she came to Daytona Beach, she came because Henry Flagler was building the Florida East Coast Railroad, and she saw a need here, and she came here and was able to talk to the Rockefellers, who were significant people during that time here in Ormond Beach, and solicit their support and become friends. Not on this one yeah, digital dash it. southeast. When they came to her campus, they wanted to know how was she going to build this school on a city dump. They trusted her. They believed in her faith that she had that she could do it. My dear Mrs. Roosevelt, dear President Coolidge, W.E.B. Du Bois, my dear President Truman, my dear friend Albert Einstein. To be able to do what she did was unheard of. I don't know that there is any other woman that was able to build the relationships that she did and be successful with it, but she could do it. She could walk into a room, she commanded presence, and people responded to her. She was an advisor to four presidents. She didn't go through the back door. She went through the front door. And so when you think about it, she was a woman well ahead of her time. There's a wonderful picture over in your library, Roosevelt's Black Cabinet. It's about 20 or so people, all black men, except this one black woman. I couldn't have asked for a better undergraduate experience. I really, really fell in love with the English program here. That led me on to uh, looking into the history of the school. And that's when I found out more about the founder. She was a transformative thinker. She literally shows the students that you can come from nothing, absolutely anything whatsoever. And if you have a dream that you can achieve anything that is possible. All the staff members are so attentive. And I know that is because of the legacy that Dr. Bethune left. The way in which she walked on campus was so powerful that I know it really had to influence the staff and my peers to act the way in which we really love each other. And knowing that I can walk in the same footstep as my founder, it encourages me to just continue being amazing and continue striving for the best that I can strive for. This school has given hope to so many people, and not just the university, but everything that the university stands for. This place is the embodiment of wisdom, power, truth, success, and beauty at its finest. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, I know we are at 231, but I do have trivia if you guys want to play, if you can stay on. The winner of that trivia will win a one digital spa kit. So um, let me show you oops, the screen that you'll need to pull up that, that quiz, that trivia. If you can stay on and want to win that um, spa kit, please do. If you can't stay on, thank you for staying on. And hopefully this motivates you to um, continue to you know, go on with our fundraising efforts. Let me share my screen for the trivia. All right, so you're going to go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the 
the join code that's on your screen. Got three people signed on so far. Anybody else? Okay. Excellent. We've got more people joining. I'm going to give it 20 more seconds and then we'll get started. Okay. Five more seconds. All right, we are going to get started. Um, these are fun fact questions about our organizations. Um, none of it was may or may not have been covered in the videos, so you might have to you may have to just put your best guess on it, and maybe you'll learn something new as well. So good luck.
we are approaching the finishing touches. Let's see if Jeff has the ability to beat Cherie in his last few questions he's got left. Oh, Jeff comes on. If anybody else can beat Jeff. Doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Um, let's see. Jeff, are you done playing? Oh, no, he's still playing. All right, congrats to Jeff Mercer. He has won the One Digital Spa Kit. And um, thank you guys so much for participating today. I'm sorry we ran a little bit over. Hopefully you guys found this insightful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me as your captain. And thank you everyone for joining um, and thank you committee members for helping. And thank you to our um, representatives from the organizations for joining us today. Have a good one, everyone.